All right, guys, today we have a long requested video. Uh, we're gonna do a tool check. So basically, I'm gonna go through what's in my box, like my favorite tools to use, the tools that I think like I, I really didn't need to buy because I don't really use them that much. Um, and as well, we'll cover like general stuff, like uh, what tools you should buy, why, um, and just kind of like things I've learned along the way from amassing like a decent tool collection, which I know it's nothing compared to a lot of people's, but you know, I'm happy with what I have. And if I can save you from buying stuff you don't need and help you buy stuff that you'll love, that'd be cool. So that is the plan for today. So I guess we'll just honestly start from the top and go down. We're not gonna start with favorites. We'll just start from the top of the toolbox and go down. So this is my first drawer. I've left this one relatively empty. And the reason being, um, this is like my go-to drawer, the easiest one to get to, you know, the easiest one to find stuff. So I have stuff that I use often. I have a, uh, like a normal knife and then I have a razor knife and I have a bunch of razor blades for this. Um, so this I use for cutting stuff that's going to dull the blade. This I use when I'm probably not going to dull the blade. I also normally carry a knife with me. I have this uh, Spyderco Endura 4. A lot of people asked about this. Really nice knife, super comfortable, um, very thin profile. So it, it's really not annoying to carry and it's so useful. Like you're opening package, you're doing all kinds of stuff. I'm going to use it to like pry stuff. Probably shouldn't do that, but uh, anyway, I also have a tape measure up here because this is the one thing that gets lost all the time is a tape measure. So I have a tape measure. It's a Stanley Fat Max. I've used these forever when I worked construction and stuff, and I've always liked these. They've been very durable for me, like using them day in and day out. So I lost my old one, but I got another one. Uh, and then a typical digital micrometer. This one I got off Amazon. I think it's like 15 bucks. It's pretty accurate. Uh, it's a really nice one um, and seems to work really well. I mean, it's a micrometer, but accuracy is key, I guess. So um, I guess with the Amazon stuff, I'll try to put the links below. I should probably sign up for an affiliate account, huh? Um, and then I have an 18650 battery oh, for my uh, little flashlight, which I'll show you when we get to the uh, drift tool bag. Uh, so we'll stay on the left side. So the next drawer is going to be my plier drawer. Um, now this is something I've recently upgraded. So what I have in here, um, we have our standard vice grips, a big and a small. Um, obviously, most of you know how useful vice grips are. Uh, I like to have a big and a small one because sometimes you can't fit the big one into certain locations. I have these really cheap Harbor Freight long nose and then 90 degree long nose and you know those pliers. These are one of those tools that you don't use super often. Um, but when you need it, you need it. And there's like nothing else that'll do the job. So that's why I bought these Harbor Freight ones because they're not gonna get used that much. I think they were like, I don't know, $5. Um, and then another super useful one, needle nose vice grips, very useful. I have like a plug boot thing. I don't even know where this came from. Don't really ever use it. Um, and then a couple snap ring pliers. I have an assortment of these, but these are the only two that I really need. These are the 90 degree ones. And then these are just your standard flip around little Matco ones. I inherited from my grandfather. So snap ring pliers are crucial. We put a motor in my friend Steven's car and we couldn't take a shifter off because he didn't have snap ring pliers. So definitely useful. Uh, these are flush cut pliers. So it's great for like the main thing I use them for is cutting zip ties because it cuts them off flush. Like you didn't, you don't get that edge that like wants to cut you. Um, and they're nice for like cutting wires and stuff, getting into tight areas. So onto the like these, Four pliers are worth more than the rest of the pliers in this drawer. So these are my Nipex pliers. So we've got cutting dikes. Um, obviously, I use cutting dikes a lot for a lot of things. Cutting zip ties, cutting little pieces of wire, um, cutting stuff out of the way, plastic clips, like cutting dikes are crucial. These are pretty much like the four pliers you absolutely need, plus a pair of ice grips, really. Uh, we'll get to the best for last. Needle nose, needle nose are crucial. I use these so much. I mean. I, needle nose are just like, if you've worked on cars, you know how important a needle nose pair of pliers is. Um, these are just your standard like Lyman style pliers. Just, well, I guess these wouldn't be Lyman. These are just like regular pliers. They've got a cutting edge um, and they, they work really well too. I don't use these super much. This is probably the least used uh, pair of pliers that I own. These are amazing. These are the Nipex Cobra, Nipex, I always say it wrong, Nipex Cobras. So. I wish I would have got the comfort grip like this on these if I had known how amazing they were going to be. So all of these are about 30 bucks a, a per. So they're expensive. But if there's anything I learned, buying nice tools will last you and you'll end up, you'll be less likely to lose them because they're expensive. 
and they're gonna last you longer than the cheap ones are. It's, it kind of evens out. If you rarely work on stuff, then buying the cheap stuff is probably the better bet. But if you work on stuff frequently like I do, I, I think it's worth it. That's a whole separate discussion though. So these, what's so great about these is they have this, um, like they're set up to grab a bolt. They have like this straight edge. I don't know if you guys can see this and this straight edge and then they have really sharp teeth. So you also have this adjustment, which like on most, I don't think, hold on. Most of these type of pliers are like this, most channel locks. So you open them up and then you can slide it down and you can close it. The problem is when you're trying to get this on a bolt, if you have it like in the midway, you'll set it down and then it'll close up or it'll be like this and you'll be trying to get it on and really hard to do what you need to do. This, you have a push button. So you push the button and adjust your jaw width. Um, and then it just stays there no matter what you do. Um, and if you turn, you, kinda, you have to turn this way. Um, so that way it kind of like bites into the teeth and sits in this little notch. But these are amazing. I have turned to these. I used to always be adamant about using the right size wrench for stuff, but like doing the alignment on the Z, I don't have a couple of the wrenches I need to adjust the arms. Um, and these work phenomenally well. I could torque something down. I mean, I've taken really stiff like tie rod ends off with no, nothing to grab onto, just like a rounded part by letting this just dig into it. So uh, I really highly recommend the Nipex, Nipex stuff. I wanna say it, it's got a K. Uh, <laughs> I really, really highly recommend them. Um, this is not sponsorship or anything. I'll tell you guys, the only person that's ever, like the only company that I've gotten free tools from is Milwaukee. Milwaukee has sent me a good bit of stuff because they're awesome and I've been using their stuff forever and just recently they've been willing to send me stuff. So that's pretty awesome. I really appreciate them. I think it shows a lot about a company that is willing to sponsor or you know, help out a small guy like me. Um, it, to me, that just speaks a lot about the company. One, it tells you that they're current if they understand kind of the power of YouTube. And two, it tells you that they care about kind of like the community and giving back. They're not just trying to sponsor like a NASCAR team. I think that's really cool. I, re I really like Milwaukee. They've been nothing but good to me. I've talked about this before, but they never, you know, they never ask anything of me. They just send it over and what I do with it is what I may, I may, I may could tell you that their stuff is horrible. I mean, there's no requirement to what I say. I don't have this list of bullet points to read off of to you guys. Um, so just know that. So take that as you may. Um, but I do really like Milwaukee stuff. So that's pretty much it for the plier drawer. I have some other just like normal pliers in here. Nope, not, not these. We're not putting these back in here. Okay, next drawer. Uh, screwdriver drawer. I'm pretty weak on screwdrivers, honestly. I don't have a whole ton. I just rent, picked up some like Harbor Freight, like Phillips and flatheads. I have like a million flatheads and almost no Phillips heads. I also have this 3D printed out this little screwdriver holder. So I have some of my small ones, which these are very handy for working on electronics and stuff, like the small Phillips head guys. And then, you know, here I have Phillips and then see how many flats I have. These are all flat. This is my two Phillips heads. And then picks, put a couple picks in here and then the really small screwdrivers. This is my razor blade dispenser. I also have this Milwaukee um, little mini pry bar. These little mini pry bars are very handy in a situation where you're gonna break a screwdriver if you try to use it. Um, but you can't fit a pry bar kind of thing. Um, so also, you know, a couple other notable mentions, little stubbies, having a nice stubby Phillips and flat is very nice. Um, Cause you'll just get into situations where you need it. Um, and then some really long ones. Like I have a couple like really long screwdrivers. Those are nice too. Sometimes you can't get into certain areas, but you know, screwdrivers are one of those things you can acquire as you go. It's, you know, get your basics down, like a couple Phillips, a couple flat heads. Um, and then just kind of like, as you go, you'll acquire them more. Like I, I didn't even buy half of these. They just got left at my house or I got them from my dad or whatever. So uh, this drawer is just stuff. It's just parts and stuff I'll show you. This is all of like my new inbox parts and bag parts. And then, um, oh, this is an important note, electrical connectors. So I have these electrical connector kits. If you're gonna do anything with wiring, buy these on like Amazon or something. These are heat shrink ones. Someone made fun of me because of the girly colors ones. Like I was like, you know nothing. Um, these are all butt connectors but you heat shrink this. So you butt connect this stuff together and then you just heat up the wider or a heat gun and then it like seals itself to the wire. If you're familiar with heat shrink tubing at all. Um, and then these are just like your other connectors, little spades, little, uh, eyelets, um, male and females, all that stuff. Um, but like this is like, I think this is like 12 bucks. 
on Amazon and buying a similar amount of the little packages at the store. Like those little packages are like three or four dollars for like the crappiest connectors you can buy. So definitely ahead of time, get yourself a couple of those and then they'll last you for a very, very long time. Okay, so still on the top. Uh, this is my abrasives drawer. Um, so I have some random stuff like punches in here, but it's mostly stuff like this, like stuff for a, uh, God, what's that tool that I don't own? Dremel, <laughs> a Dremel. Um, we've got like a little small file kit with a bunch of different types of files. I got this specifically to fix the keyway on an SR um, crank. I had to file it down. I got all sorts of different sized picks. Uh, this is just your Harbor Freight kit. Someone made a good point that this is not something you want to cheap out on because if you're trying to pick out a seal and this breaks off, it's going to be a much more expensive problem and I agree with them and I kind of want to upgrade mine, but like I don't, I don't know of like a good pick brand. Um, we got wire brushes and then what I use the most out of this setup is um, all my little wire wheels. These are again Harbor Freight kits. They don't last very long. After like a little bit of use, they start to fray out really bad like that and then they don't, they're not very effective. Um, but I mean, I don't know that a nicer one would be, um, but those are those are super useful for like cleaning paint off stuff, cleaning rust off stuff, um, just cleaning stuff up in general, cleaning gasket material off like Miatas and SRs, your oil pan is RTV'd on, so cleaning that RTV off um, with a wire wheel and a drill, pff, piece of cake. If you try to do it with like a razor blade and like a little scotch right pad, it'll take you forever. So I, I highly suggest those. And so I've got an empty drawer here, which brings you to a good point. Uh, if you get a new toolbox, I used to be the type where I was like so focused on making my toolbox full. Like I want a full toolbox, you know? I wanna feel proud of it being filled up. Same with like the pegboard and all that stuff. Try not to, well, you know, it's hard, but try not to because what happens is then you run out of room, then you get those new tools and you're like, oh crap, where do I put them? I have nowhere to put them. So I've left a few empty drawers in different locations just so that I have room to grow um, when I get more tools, which is inevitable. Uh, below that, we have my electronics drawer. So you got this multimeter. This is on Amazon. This is a great multimeter. It's uh, backlit. And if you've ever multimetered anything, multimetered. If you've ever had to check voltage on anything, check ground, whatever, like working on a car, generally it's at night, at least for me, and you can't see the screen and you're trying to hold these two guys like this or like this and like look at whatever you're doing and trying to look at the screen and shine a light on the screen is really hard. So this one, let me turn it on for you. You probably can't even tell that it's backlit, but it's backlit. So that is awesome. I had a nicer one that I gave to John cause he didn't have one or he had like a really old one and I'm like, he's never gonna buy one. I need to give him this one. And uh, I'm glad cause I got this one which is cheaper and better. Uh, okay, these are my own little alligator clips, um, just little jumper leads. So they have an alligator clip on each end. I heat shrinked them, soldered them to the wire. We got different lengths of these. These are really nice for doing stuff like with a multimeter. If you've got to go from like a wire inside the car to a wire in the engine bay or something, um, you know, you can connect it with these. I've done that a lot, troubleshooting stuff. Test light, obviously easiest way you can do it. Hook to ground, check for power. If there's power, the light turns on. Um, so this is obviously super useful. I've got wire strippers and I like almost wouldn't even suggest these. These are just nice for getting in small areas. I was just trying to buy nice ones and these are all I could find. These are amazing. Also another Amazon buy, I think like 13 bucks. This stuff's so cheap now. Um, so let me get a wire to show you guys. So these are cool. So you've got your cutter. So let's say we got to cut this wire up. So we cut it. So then we've got this. This is our adjustment for depth. This is how far we want it to strip the wire, I'm having trouble moving it, there we go. So we'll make it really big, like as far as it'll go. So then you slide the wire in here, get it lined up to the end of that, and then just, boom. If you cut it shorter, if you do it shorter, I'll show you. So you do it like a normal amount, it'll pull the whole sheath off. So, Anyway, these, oh my God, if you've ever stripped wires before, you know how annoying like this and trying to tug on it is. These are a game changer. I think everyone should have these in their toolbox because they're so cheap, $13. And like, they work just fine. You know, they, they, it makes $60 ones, like the original is probably like 60 bucks, but I don't know. I think that one works just fine. So that's why I use that one. Okay, now we're moving down to my two like bigger drawers. So we've got my wrench drawer. I mean, pretty much it's wrenches. So I have 
it's, it's something noteworthy here. It's a bad time of day to do this. The light gets all funky. So this is my star lineup I would consider. I have from 22 all the way down to four. Um, and I got these Milwaukee wrenches. They sent me these recently. So they're like a I-beam style design. Then the big deal here is that the, you can see the jaw. Let me compare for you. Oh, let me get a bigger one for you. 15 and 15. So see how this jaw is just a U. So it's really only grabbing the bolt on these two sides because this is just kind of like there not to hit the bolt. So this one is cut to where it's gonna grab it on all but one side. And then on top of that, it's got these little notches cut in it so that you can slide it all the way over. And it's got serrations on the actual jaw itself. These are much better than I expected them to be. I thought it was gimmicky to do all that. Wow, huge difference. I noticed that when I was doing the alignment on my vet on the tie rod, having to turn it with a little 13, I always kind of, it wants to flex the head and pop off and stuff. And with this, did not did not have an issue at all. Um, so then I have my backup, because a lot of times you'll have a fastener where it's a 12 and a 12. So you need two of the same thing. So I have my backup line up here, which is 19. I've got doubles, so it's like 19, 17s, 15s, um, 13s, 12s, there's one 14. Anyway. Second, second string here. Then we've got our ratchety wrenches. These are one of those like top five tools, which we'll go over later. These are, will save your life. I grab for these almost as much as anything else, especially these flex head ones. So you've got the head flexes. So if you've got to get to a bolt that's like on the face of something, but you can't get a wrench on it, hit, lean back. These are very handy. I wish I had a bigger set because I only have up to 15. So I have non flex head from eight to 15 and then flex head from, I believe, yeah, 10 to 15. So super handy. Then I've got over here, we've got my short wrenches. Um, I almost never use these. I bought them for like one job on my old 944 turbo, like for one thing. I tried to cut this one in half, didn't work. Um, then I went and bought these and they didn't come with a 17. That's what it was. I went and bought these. Then they didn't come with a 17. So I had to cut them in half, one and a half. Uh, and then I have standard. I don't use standard stuff very much. So I don't have a lot of it. Uh, but I've got kind of like the main sizes going up. And then I have a couple of the big ones, like a one inch, one and an eighth, and one three eighths. Uh, so these are just kind of real special case tools. And they take a lot of room. I don't really prefer them. So then the next drawer is going to be the socket drawer. God, the lighting is terrible. I'm going to close the garage. Ah, oh, much better. Should have done that from the start. Okay, so socket drawer, what we have here. So it's kind of it looks unorganized. We've got half inch, quarter inch, three eighths. So this is all my three eighths stuff, quarter inch stuff, half inch to about here. So we've got half inch deep, half inch short. Obviously I'm missing quite a handful. I need to complete this set. But I have the main sizes that work. Um, you know, like 24 is usually the biggest I need besides something like a 32, which I have here. I have a deep 32 and a short 32 that's very commonly used for axle bolts. Um, and I have a 30 as well, which can also be used. I have this giant socket that I forget what it's for. It's for like Ford hubs or something weird like that. I have my really long extensions back here that I seldomly use. This is a half inch one and then I have an even longer three-eighths one these are almost always like too long not the half inch one but this three-eighths one normally i need to just put a bunch of three-eighths ones together because it's like too long but getting to like the top of a bell housing bolt on a transmission while it's in the car this kind of comes in handy so you can see how much i use them by where i leave them back there so we have quarter inch so i have standard and metric so i have pretty much all the metric besides a short 10 and then this is another metric set. So this is like a on the go metric set. That's why I have it on this. Just, this is for like, if I need to take it somewhere, work on stuff, sometimes you're under the car and it's easier to get to like have a string of them. So that's what that's for. Then this is my, you know, I have pretty much everything up to 14 and quarter inch. I have my Milwaukee quarter inch electric ratchet, which is nice because the head size on this is tiny. It's a very small head size. This is an amazing tool. This is also in the top five. This tool is so useful, will save you so much time. Um, and then I have like my little quarter inch ratchets. I have this Craftsman one, not a huge fan. These old Craftsman ones, which I think they're still mostly like this. They might be converting. 
the teachers don't feel very positive on them. They're kind of like, they're all, they're all sloppy. Like that's what I have for my half inch one as a craftsman. And they just like, there's so much swing before you get a click. I don't know. I've never been a huge fan of these craftsman ratchets. Um, I might've said wrenches a minute ago. Um, but that's what I have. So that and uh, what is this one? Stanley, this is a little Stanley one. So this is obviously my most commonly used section. We've got all my 3.8 stuff. So I've got everything up to 20 on the short. Short, I have every single one. Uh, 3.8, I'm missing eight, seven, and six. I think this isn't even a nine, this might be a nine. Oh, this is a nine. Yeah, so I'm missing eight, seven, and six. This is another 10, it's a short 10. It's like a mid-length 10. So I have all those. This is the same thing as over there. It's like a go, go strip of them. So this is up to like 22 or something. Um, for working on the car or whatever. I don't really grab this that much. I normally just go back and forth to the box. And then this is just another whole backup set for when I lose them or whatever. Then we have this, which is your Harbor Freight Flex Head 3 8 Ratchet. These are really nice. I like them a lot. I really like the Flex Head stuff. It comes in super handy a lot of times. Um, and then I have, this is like my favorite ratchet. It's a GM Performance Parts Ratchet. It's obviously some China brand that GM rebranded. I think it sold at O'Reilly's. But man, the teeth count on this is like greater than any other ratchet I've ever used. Like listen. Like it requires virtually no movement. It's so smooth. I love this ratchet. And then this one's great too. When you have to use a 3-8 socket, but you want to make sure you don't put too much torque on something, you can use this guy and kind of do like the two finger method, tighten it down. Um, or getting into tight places, I also use this a lot. And then of course, the 3-8 version of the electric ratchet. Both of these are so dirty because I use them so much. Um, but this one you can see has a considerably larger head size. So it's kind of nice because this one's, you know, it's in a tight area. You can't get something in there, um, but you can get this in there usually. And then this is, you still can't get like an impact in there, but you want to speed the process up. Uh, it's a lot, it, it's not a lot stronger, but it, you know, it's got a little more power to it. Again, these are highly advisable. Even just one or the other, I couldn't tell you which one's my favorite. I use both of these electric ratchets about equally. So, um, and then on the last part of this drawer, this is like my accessory section. So we've got spark plug sockets. We've got these that I never have like ever used. I bought them to do something and it didn't work for it and I've just never used them. Cause generally when I need something like this, it needs to be a deep well anyway. Um, and these just kind of like got all wonky when I use an impact with them. I got them when I was like 16 and I've just never used them. Uh, and just a bunch of random stuff like flex head, like old snap on, like flex head with the socket things. These might not be snap on. Challenger? I don't know. These are old. These are my granddad's. But they're all standard, so I don't really use them. Got crow's feet, but I don't have a crow's feet bar. I do have a breaker bar, so that would work. And then we have... So this is uh, my half inch extensions and swivel, and then like adapters, you know, from like impact, a little, you know, nut runner impact and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, and then this is misc, then this is quarter inch stuff, like extra sockets I use, adapters from three eighths to quarter inch, swivel, quarter inch swivel, quarter inch extensions. And this is the same thing, but three eighths, got a couple swivels, adapters, half inch to three eighths and then we got extensions which we're running low on three eighths extensions so that's pretty much it for the socket drawer this is again the drawer that probably gets the most action i would say i totally missed this drawer on the way down this is allen keys i've had funny fun fact i've had this set of allen keys complete since i was 16. bottom the first time i had to work on my porsche pull the transaxle and torque tube out and i've not lost a single one knock on wood um, then we got a couple of these. I don't really care for these. I, I just, I always break them and they fall apart. And I, I just, they're nice because you don't have to keep coming back and forth to grab like different Allens. Um, but I, I'm not a fan of these setups. Um, and I have my couple rails of Torx bits here. So the Torx bits, Torx bits, it's like smaller, bigger, because I have a bunch of doubles. And then we've got E-bits, which is a reverse Torx bit. God, what did I have to buy these for? I think I had to buy these for a Volkswagen that I owned. And then another set of Ebits, because I must have lost them along the way. And then a couple oddball Allens. This is a 17 mil Allen. This is for removing the drain plug on my 944 for the transaxle. Still have it. Um, and then we've got MISC, non-organized at all Allens. These are extras of the torque sockets. And then this is your little 
you put like a screwdriver bit in there and when you hit it with a hammer, it twists like 90 degrees or so. You can break stuff free with it. I've never used it, I don't think. Another heirloom for my granddad. Oh, and then we got fuel gauges back here um, for checking gap on things, spark plugs, all sorts of stuff. So that is that drawer. Okay, moving on. We have another empty drawer, another big empty drawer for the uh, bottom side of the toolbox. This drawer is like specialty stuff. So we've got, got like a pulley puller, uh, these little small pry bars. Uh, this tool that I made for doing valve springs on an LS, I just welded like a piece of bar stock to the actual tool I got off eBay, like threads down and then you can pry them off. Uh, we got some tire levers, like small tire levers. I use these for doing like motorcycle tires. Again, inherited from my granddad. I don't really use these very often. <laughs> not, not a necessity. Most of this drawer is like oddball stuff. Like we also have a few files and stuff. I, I had these in a weird spot for the longest time and I could never find them. And I was, I needed them like a handful of times and could never find them. Now I finally know where they are. That's that drawer. Very simple. We then have the box drawer. So we've got, got a leak down tester. This is actually Adam's. He's just never taken it home. We've got a crappy tap and die set. I need to get another one of these that doesn't suck. This one's terrible and it's mostly uh, standard thread, which I, again, don't deal with very often. We've got this, these, oh man, yeah, these are awesome. Another Amazon purchase. We'll put the link for this below too. It's like uh, five different sizes of these tapered bits. So what these do, this is good for like thin, th thinnish stuff. Like you're not gonna drill through a half inch plate with this, but it just drills and as it goes, it steps up the diameter of the hole. These are very, very handy. A lot better than drilling with a standard drill bit through like, you know, a firewall of a car or something like that. I am so glad I bought these. I was reluctant to buying them for the longest time. Very glad I did. Here I have my torque wrench. This is like a torque wrench adapter from Harbor Freight. It sucks. This is like my third one. and. I got this one and it lasted like not even five minutes. So would not recommend. It's basically trash. Uh, GM power steering puller. I think this is actually considered a Chrysler power steering or, or pulley puller rather. Uh, it's got all these different rods. One of those things, this is unnecessary. You could rent it at the uh, parts store, but I just figured I'd use it. And it was like 30 bucks on eBay or Jags, I think. I think it was more expensive on eBay, surprisingly. <laughs> If this will close, oh, barely. Okay, so now this is the too big of stuff drawer. So we've got this DeWalt grinder that is one of those I inherited it things. No idea where it came from, but I have it. Um, and it didn't have the right stuff to put a disc on it, so I bought this $15 Harbor Freight grinder. I think it was 20, but 15 with a coupon. And it seems to work pretty well. It's super loud. It's like very bearing noisy and just loud. Um, but I keep a cutoff wheel on this one all the time and then I keep a flat wheel or some sort of grinding stone on this one Which is super useful because normally when you cut something you got to clean it off. So keep those together got my circular saw Got my power probe. I'll show you guys this in a second and tell you my thoughts on it Got an extra drill this air impact that I should just give to somebody whoever needs it because I'll never use it Got a heat gun a cheap Harbor Freight multi um, heat level one just because they didn't have the cheap one. And I got this Milwaukee Sawzall. I'm very happy with this thing. The over molding is nice and thick. It feels really good in the hand. It doesn't like wear your hand out. It comes all the way back to here. You've got nice over molding on the grip. Um, it's cordless. It's super smooth. The blade change design is really nice. You just push that up, pull the blade out, put the blade back in, blades in. So I really am very, very happy with this tool. I thought it was gonna be less powerful than my corded one and it is much more, it feels more powerful and it's a lot smoother and a lot quieter. Oh, and then I have, let me show you guys this. Okay, first off, we'll talk about the power probe. Um, this is definitely a handy tool. I just don't think it's necessary and I barely use it. Um, so basically you've got this and you've got your wires. This hooks up to the battery. So you hook this directly to your battery. This has power. So you have your little pick. You can also hook it up to a cigarette lighter. Put this in. So then you can, you know, it's basically like testing on a multimeter. One nice thing is it has a beep. So if you, you know, it has power, it'll beep and be green. And then if it's uh, ground, or I think power is red, ground is green. 
um, than ground. And what's nice about it is you can make a circuit work. So like for a window, for example, like the Miata, I need to roll the window up. So I just plug this in, hook this to the negative, positive, and then use the little trigger to send power or you can send ground. Um, so it's useful for that kind of stuff. I just, maybe I just don't do enough electrical stuff to do it. It'd be great if you were like a, you know, mechanic like a dealership or something and you're diagnosing electrical issues and stuff and need to test around, but I'm not normally diagnosing electrical issues that much, like car wide, you know, if it's an electrical issue, it's something like tune related. Or... Then you have this kit, which a viewer sent in graciously. Oh God, the clasp are really hard to open though. So this is a, um, it's called like a pass through ratchet and socket set. So that's your like ratchet and you put this in so you can still go through. So like going down in a long stud or something, there's a lot of times these are useful. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have the right size ratchet wrench or you can't get in there with a ratchet wrench. Or this also has multi, like it, the type of profile that these teeth are is meant to hook on to like squared off stuff, like a squared in stud or like rounded off stuff or Torx, I think, like reverse Torx. It's meant for like a lot of different things. Um, I haven't really got to use this that much yet because I just got it. We have one similar at work and it's definitely really handy. Um, so again, huge thanks to who I ever sent that. I still haven't found the comment, but I will find it. I'll press review. Okay, we're getting a little low on time here.